Spider Man. Oh uh, yes, I've been wanting. To, I did. I did. I think I did do a web a webcam review of these on my channel. On my channel, I think I did. I do a webcam. Or I think or did I do a salute. Either way, I've always wanted to review, but just never got around to doing it. I've always wanted to review the Sam Raimi Spider Man. Uh, Sam Raimi um Spider Man series. Sp Sam Raimi Spider Man um series and um. Yeah, um, Sam Raimi Spider-Man series, in my opinion, one of the greatest and most revolutionary superhero movies of all time. Not the best, like the Spider-Man 2 gets, but the best and most revolutionary superhero movies. I consider the awesome MCU we have on today is because of the X-Men, Spider-Man, and I guess the Blade movies, the Blade movies too, is because of these movies we have the awesome MCU, and during their, during their time period, they were the best. They were the greatest of all time. They're, they're surpassed by the superior MC and DCEU now. But during their time period, during their time period, these movies, quote unquote, were um, were um, quote unquote the best. And it all started with Spider-Man 2002. Nothing will beat seeing Spider-Man for the first time of the trilogy. This is the weakest, but it's in my opinion one of the most exciting, one of the most exciting and the most and the most action oriented most action oriented with that hugely bloody fight between green between um peter parker and the green goblin spider-man i grew up with spider-man i grew up with the cart i started with the cartoons first so and the cartoons never got that bloody and violent this film had lots of violence by lots of violence deaths and fatalities and fatalities like uh mortal Kombat, and that caught me off guard and blew me away back then seeing all of those moments and then seeing every moment from the comic book and cartoons i started with the cartoons come to life another thing i liked another thing i liked was um this was one thing i liked that that in my opinion made this movie better spectacle wise than its comic book was the journey i liked the journey this was in the 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 mcu spider-man 2 peter parker his suit his suit one of the main things i've always hated about spider-man and why I'm not the hugest Spider-Man fan was cause, was how unrealistic it was. See, Peter Parker Spider-Man never had quote unquote um, mentors. Never had mentors. Never had a mentor to provide. Never had a mentor to teach him how to use his pop, use and control his power, or learn from, or even give him his costume and stuff. Give him his costume and stuff. So he made a costume. He managed to go from regular street clothes to a Hollywood stage production an expensive Hollywood stage production based costume costume this is this is the issue I always have with Peter Spider-Man in this film he went from street clothes to a Halloween costume which is more realistic for someone like a Peter Parker Spider-Man a Halloween costume a, a cheaply made Halloween costume which is much more realistic and believable for a kid with little money with little money who got a costume uh, made, made he went from a um, he went from um he went from the goofy ninja wrestling Halloween costume to finally after the iconic Uncle Ben death, he went from to to, to the biggest one to, to the to the comic book base costume with the earnings he got from um from um, quote unquote um wrestling from quote unquote from quote unquote wrestling and um yeah, so um yeah the most um the most exciting and everyone, Tobey Maguire, James Franco, who portrayed Harry Osborne, Kirsten Dunst, who portrayed Mary Jane, and William Dafoe owned the Goblin. William Dafoe and James Franco's Green and New Goblins are my all-time favorite incarnation of Harry and Norman Osborne and the Green Goblin character. In my opinion, I like the glider and bombs, but that though that that. that that cheesy goblin Halloween costume from the comic books, my opinion, that doesn't translate well to live to live action. That that Power Ranger Diver Muscle Tan Batman style suit that he had, Batman, Batman, um, Joel Schumacher and Tim Burton Batman suit he had in the film, in my opinion, suits a live action goblin, especially during that time. You couldn't really go out of the way with the goofy comic book costumes back then. Back then, so um. So um yeah um quote unquote um yeah so yeah Spider Man two two then you have Spider the, Spider Man two thousand two then you have the much superior sequel this film was bigger and better than the first one but in my opinion wasn't as exciting and while being one of the greatest 
superhero movies of all time. I don't think it's one of them. I don't think it's the best, and I don't think it's the best of the Spider-Man trilogy. It's second best, but this film right here, this film right here, gave you more, more action, more of what you wanted to see in the second one. And I like how we went more in depth with um, Peter Parker and Alfred Molina. Alfred Molina was one of the greatest versions of um, Doc Ock. Another thing I like about this movie is this movie is actually takes inspirations from a Spider-Man comic book called Spider-Man, Spider-Man No More, Spider-Man, um, Spider-Man quote unquote No More. So um, yeah, I also like how it took also ideas from the animated um, series, which a lot of people who bash this film keep forgetting. Only thing I didn't like about this film was um. The Mary Jane leaving, thinking was Joe Jonah, Jonah Jameson's son at the altar to be with Peter Parker. I didn't, I didn't like that, right there. But other than that, um, great, great superhero movie. Then you got Spider-Man Three, which in my opinion is the best of the trilogy. This is why I consider the worst and weakest of the trilogy. This was the best of the um, trilogy. This film, go back to 2007. Now I expect more, but back in 2007, when standards were much low, when standards were much different and lower then, and we still, we were getting there, but we still haven't arrived yet. Just think, this picture, this film, this film at Peter Parker Spider-Man, Harry Osborn's New Goblin, The Sandman, my boy Sandman, finally made it into a movie, The Sandman, and last but not least. Eddie Brock's Venom. We had all of that in one movie, and it was one gigantic superhero, supervillain smackdown. Superhero, superhero smackdown. And um, and unlike the Amazing Spider-Man 2, this film, this film, my opinion, my opinion, managed to juggle three villains. Managed to juggle three villains better than the quote-unquote Amazing Spider-Man 2. You had Harry Osborn already built up from Spider-Man's one and two. Spider-Man's one and two, and this movie continues and ends his arc. Then you had, then you had, um, you had Eddie Brock and Sandman use this entire film to develop their care to develop quote unquote their characters, their um, quote unquote uh, characters. I like how they incorporated the black suit and everything. Only problem I would have with this film is that oh yeah, only problem first problem I had was killing off Eddie Brock and Venom for good. Apparently, told me. Apparently, Sam Raimi did not want to put the the the, sim, the the Venom and Symbiote's character in the film, so he put the worst version of the worst version of it in the film and just killed it off. So he didn't have to bother with it for the sequels, for the uh, quote unquote sequels. In my opinion, they ruined the chance right after the Symbiotes. I didn't see right after the Symbiotes and Sandman. I didn't see what big villain you could take. You could take. You could take the spot. They were talk. They were. They were talks of Vulture. Vulture, Morbius, and right, and Black Cat, but I didn't see what, what, the Spider-Man villain could be could could take the role after Spy after after the Goblins, and um Goblins and and um and um Doc Ock who were dead at that time. Sandman became a good guy, and. I didn't see any blockbuster films. I could see a B movie, but any blockbusters film centered around Rhino, Electro, Vulture, and um, Vulture and um, the uh, Vulture and the other Vulture and the other um, Vulture and the other villains, villains, villains being good. Spider-Man: Homecoming proved me wrong about the Vulture. You could make a blockbuster film with him if you change some things around. But they proved me wrong. But at the time, I didn't think you could do it, so I was okay with a reboot back then back then but looking back yeah you by killing off Venom you ruined your chance of the sequels and looking back if you would have took Venom out of this film this film was fine the way it was but if you would have took Venom and Eddie Brock if you would have took Venom out of this film you can have Eddie Brock but you would have took the Venom out of this film had the film end with him becoming Venom you'd have a much more exciting movie you could have just had it Sandman and Harry Osborn and that would have that would have you would have that would have been even better more consistent movie than the quote unquote um than the quote unquote um, other um, base movies with Venom, like I said, it was crowded. It had way too much going on, but they managed to juggle it much better than the Amazing Spider-Man 2. Amazing Spider-Man 2. So um, yeah, this was um, the Spider-Man. It's also in my um. By the way, the the, the links will be in the description. As always, the links will be in the description box below. I pay tribute to quote unquote what's his name, um, Cliff 
Robertson, I think that's his name, who portrayed on, on Uncle Ben. I had no idea he died, and he's been dead for a long time since 2011. Well, this was um, this has been my um, short narration introduction review to Spider-Man. Once again, the links to the longer narration webcam version with the musical intro and outros. Those be in the description box below. Get ready.